takes time to realize the value and the beauty of rivers. It takes more time to understand how a river flows. It takes more than two times to get it right, but the whole time we are learning better. The River Lab. The River Lab is a research platform we have been developing at the IGB during the last two decades. At large, the River Lab aims at quantitative explanation of natural fluvial ecosystems by examining their fundamental processes and mechanisms. And more specifically, we focus on the real-life flow biota interactions in different geomorphological settings. This knowledge is valuable for understanding how to preserve and restore the biological diversity in our climate-changing world. To deal with the complexities of nature, the River Lab offers a methodological bridge to connect field and laboratory methods and a platform for a cross-disciplinary dialogue. The River Lab relies on detailed instrumental measurements, which are carried out under experimental control of variables in the in-stream mesocosms. How does the River Lab work? A good example is the project on flow-fish interactions. Natural riverbeds consist of topographic heights, so-called bars, and lows, called pools. A reflay is where water flowing over a bar concentrates when running into a pool of calmer water. In fluid mechanics, such transitions are called jets. Yes the same like the aircrafts moving by gas ejections. What makes a river flow similar and different to a jet engine? In this quest, we test the hypothesis that flow in reflow pool transitions is not simply a special member of jet's family, but also a complex hydromorphological engine driving fish behavior. In reflows, water rich with oxygen supports reverse benthic phenomena which replenishes the community in drift. In refill pool transitions, drifting organisms converge into narrow areas. There, fish has a better chance to intercept the prey, though fish needs to move restlessly back and forth across the fast flow. How do fish minimize cost for swimming? What other flow structures they use? To answer this and many other questions is impossible without experimental data. And the River Lab provides a way to collect this data. The approach of the River Lab is to simplify complex natural environments by retaining their essential features. At the first step, we simplify the planar morphology by building a symmetric straight one-to-one -one scaled model of a reflow pool unit. And then we carry out a set of instrumental measurements. At the next step, we convert the bar pool morphology into a shallow jet model by flattening the riverbed and thereby eliminating the effects of vertical topographical non-uniformity. Additionally, we construct a nozzle which concentrates and accelerates the flow forming the jet. This construction is based on the same principle as the design of an aircraft engine. This is not merely a superficial similarity, but an explicit link between our experiments and already available hydrodynamic theory which is the basis of many technical applications of jets. Later, by comparing our results with that theory, we'll identify, quantify, and offer new solutions for the effects induced by features essential for natural systems, but neglected in technical applications. On the final step, we'll apply new theory to examine mechanisms of fish flow interactions and their implications for fish behavior. 
But what measurements do we carry out in these experiments? Hydrodynamic measurements of the river lab are carried out with acoustic Doppler velocimeters. These devices sample three-dimensional instantaneous flow velocities. Typically, we mount the sensors on a floatable platform for fast and accurate mapping of hydrodynamic patterns. Complementary to flow measurements in the river lab, we use visualization and remote sensing techniques. Apart from quantitative assessment of turbulent structures, the video records obtained with drones and underwater cameras provide important quantitative information on both flow and biota. We also explore new technologies as for example this pressure sensor which measures hydrodynamic forces acting on a fish in the turbulent flow. So how do we link fish behavior to hydrodynamics? Observations indicate the type of path fish take for a crossing flow in natural reef or pool transitions. From a sluggish water in an eddy, fish moves through a jet at about 40 degree angle of attack. Its body acts as an airfoil that extracts a side slip component of force balance, which takes fish across without tail beats. We simulate this move in the mesocosms and measure pressure at multiple points across the jet at different angles of attack. By repeating measurements in multiple cross-sections, we expect to find energetically optimal entry and exit points, stable trajectories and effective body postures. In the future, we will measure fish trajectories in natural environments with the hope that they would show similar patterns. But even now we can clarify a question we started with. In simplified shallow jets, turbulence around the jet is much stronger than in natural refill pools. Lower turbulence implies enhancement of stability during the move and better visibility of a prey that increases success of foraging. This was just one of many examples of fish behavior aided by flow fish interactions in turbulent non-uniform flows. However, most of our present knowledge is based on empirical models employing various critical speeds of fish motion obtained in schematized laboratory tests with uniform flows. Lab experiments rely on simplicity, that is a tool to increase precision. It comes at a steep cost. The more we simplify the phenomena, the more we move away from them. Field observations focus on the things that matter to natural processes, but they are difficult to conduct in a truly scientific fashion. The series of naturalistic experiments already completed with the River Lab demonstrate the cumulative benefits of combined lab and field methods, which are greater than the sum of their parts. The River Lab. You find us where the rivers flow. Mm.